This is the first episode of a series I'm calling Too Long Didn't Watch. This is where I will take all eight hours of previous game development footage and squeeze it into a nice, neat little package so that you don't have to watch all eight hours of developing. Let's start with the premise. So I was a big fan of the book. My, um, uh, my father gave me a copy of the book, for my, uh, I think around my birthday, around 1984. And it's been in my possession for years. I, I still have it with me. And uh, I've, I've always wanted to turn into a uh, project. And um, so I decided to use a, a platform that I was familiar with. And um, uh, I was a fan of uh, King's Quest 3, Space Quest, uh, Police Quest. I loved those games. Those were my favorite games growing up. And it's just decided to combine the two. Um, I've taken two attempts at it in the past, and uh, I've decided, uh, you know what? If I get to make this stick, I want to do something that I can broadcast live. So, um, which leads me up to my next point. I've done some uh, previous YouTube broadcasts. Um, I've done gameplays that didn't work for me. I've done reviews, and I'm a terrible reviewer. I, I, I don't do. Um, critical reviews, uh, and for, for me, the best fit for me seems to be something in which I can create something. That something seems to be a game, so I decided, okay, this is what I'm going to do. This is what keeps me motivated. Uh, I want to create something, and um, I want to do something on YouTube, and this is it. This is what's going to, uh, this, this suits me just fine. And uh, ultimately, I was thinking of uh, switching to a new job um, at, at some point because, um, you know, I've been sticking with one for close to five years now, and I think it's time for me to move up, so I figured uh, this may also be something I can fit on my resume. This is something I do, do on my own time, learning a language I'm not familiar with, uh, doing a story I'm not even sure, uh, you know, what's going to happen, but this is me being a developer, a software developer. I figured, uh, you know, this is a good chance for me to show off my skills. So the first thing I want to cover are the resource materials. And uh, the very first resource material is, of course, uh, the book, the actual book, Reading Adventure Games on Your Computer by Tim Hartnell. Uh, he is uh, uh, an Australian author who sadly passed away specific game we'll be working on is Werewolves and Wonder that uh, originally ran on with computers that had 24K. It was written in 1983 to 1984, I'm not sure exactly, in Microsoft Basic, which means any machine at that period running Microsoft Basic ought to run it perfectly. It is a text-based adventure, which means it's going to be Comparable with an older text-based uh, adventure game, it does have a nice interface, but really there's there's, there's no graphics in here at all. It is entirely text-based, uh, text and for me, it has a sentimental value. I, I would spend weekends uh, typing this basic game and reaping in the rewards. So next, I want to talk about SCI Companion. To me. Um, SCI Companion uh, has a great sentimental value because I'm familiar with uh, games such as King's Quest IV, Space Quest III, etc. And so I'm, I'm a huge fan of the, uh, those games and uh, this uh, engine is able to replicate games on that level. And I've become familiar with the game by doing some prior projects. I've done uh, probably, um, I'd say two or three Projects. None of them completed though, but I am familiar with uh, both the uh, with the interface and with the programming language. Speaking of prior projects, um, I've done two, I've attempted to do two other games using uh, both uh, C SCI 1.0 and AGP, which is an unassociated with SCI Companion, but it is in a sort of Sierra game family kind of uh, deal. The story so far, I've created a sandbox environment to test anything that, that I am not familiar with, 
So at this point I have completed the first four basic tutorials of SC101. So of course the story needs a main character. Uh, there's a lot of ways we can go about character interpretation. There was a lot of ambiguity in the book. There was uh, no real descriptors. It was making use of the second tense, which means one of the new or uh, so uh, this character could be anybody. It could be man, woman, old, young, uh, trans if you want. It could be a cockroach. It could be an elephant. It doesn't matter. As long as you can program it, it's open for interpretation. And in this case, I applied my own. I decided this guy was going to be a hiker of some sort. So I gave him a beard and um, yeah, it needs some work still, but uh, I'm happy with how it's turning out. So this is uh, the work that I've currently done so far with Room 1. I've made a conscious effort to not import pictures from Google. The name of the game is to trace the images, not to simply copy and paste the images. Uh, I want to give it my own touch. This, this will be where I'll be spending most of my time because it just takes so freaking long to, to draw. It took me... Uh, I'd say uh, two and a half hours to draw this much. Uh, however, I am happy with how it's turning out. Really happy. So here's my to-do list for the next eight hours. The first thing I need to do, above all else, is to finish room one. The next thing to do is to finish the main character, or as he is known in this game, the main ego. Then I will need to do the next two chapters in the tutorial. The last thing I will need to do is to start on room two. All right, enough of my yakin. Let's see what the game looks like.